Welcome back. For more on our top stories and others, please visit our website, channelstv.com and youtube.com forward slash channels web. You can also watch us on the go. You can do that on your mobile device. Log on to m.channelstv.com and download the Channels TV app for Android, iOS and Windows devices from their respective stores. The Channels TV and the Channels 24 apps will give you access to news and updates. You'll also have access to the eyewitness feature so you too can share pictures, videos or news of happenings around you so you can be part of the news. Just install the app then tap and swipe to reveal the menu. Don't forget to follow the instructions you see. Well, as we know, all is set for the governorship elections in Anambra State, Southeast Nigeria. But we want to know what the mood is like. And to tell us more on that is our political correspondent, Sheo Okibaloye. He is live in Oka, the Anambra State capital. Hello, Sheo. Hi. Okay, Thank so you it's... so much. Uh, and you are uh, welcome live to okay. Oka, the capital of Anambra State, where... Uh, at the command and control center of INEC at the headquarters where we are monitoring this election for you. Uh, as we speak, it looks so much that INEC is going about town to ensure that the distribution of sensitive and non-sensitive materials are done based on what they have planned and what they have scheduled. So, uh, Channel television reporters are all around the state, from Orumba to Onicha. We are monitoring this situation. There are a few concerns, though, in town, especially where the distributions are happening. A lot of apprehension as to the issues of logistics. There are a lot of the ad hoc officials who are still waiting in the wings, waiting on the moment when they will be able to collect and distribute the materials. Those are the reports that we are getting on the ground, and Channel Television can confirm that to you. We did hear from the INEC wreck earlier, the man who is the arms of affair here, who told us that everything has been planned, transportation intact, but it looks so much that much will have to be done in the coming hours to ensure that the 8 a.m. start to this exercise tomorrow will be indeed a success. Well, let's tell you about the security situations in and around town. There are stops and checks by the Nigerian police. We did also can tell you that about 26,000 uh, police uh, men and women are on the ground. Three choppers, we understand, will hover around the three major senatorial districts to monitor this election. And also in the River Rhine areas, there are gunboats and the Navy uh, will assist the police and other security agencies on the ground. Earlier on, we spoke with the DIG in charge of this uh, election, that is the Deputy Inspector General of Police, uh, Mr. Joshak, who told us about the plans of the police. Take a listen to him. We are looking at a situation where there won't be less than five, six security personnel placed in each of the polling units. And that has informed our opinion of bringing in 21,000 to meet the 5,000 policemen on ground here, bringing the total to 26 physically captured by names and deployed by names. And we will be seeing area surveillance also. Uh, what about the sea? We, are, we, are, we have our three helicopters dedicated, one each to the senatorial district. This one will be aerial patrol, but it will also assist even our next staff if there are reasons why we have to get them. We also have 15 gunboats supported by the Nigerian Navy on the sea. There are three local governments that is predominantly water. Uh, if you go to Onitsha and watch through, you will... And so that's a word from the Nigerian police, the, uh, the senior, the most senior police officer in Anambra State as we speak, and who is in charge of this election. Okay, now let's look at some other areas. What other people are saying about this election? International and local observers are monitoring this election for us and...
to see what exactly is going to be happening tomorrow. One man who is the chairman of uh, the Nigerian Bar Association Election Monitoring Group is Mr. Festus Okoye. He joins us now on Channels Television to give us an insight into what exactly is happening. Thank you so much, Mr. Okoye, for joining us on Channels Television. Thank so what can you tell us precisely uh, from what yourself and your group have seen so far in terms of preparations, the conduct and security? Well, I, I think that uh, the Independent National Electoral Commission understands the centrality of this election to the whole democratic process in Nigeria. And uh, from what we have seen, uh, the non-sensitive materials were distributed on time. The sensitive materials are also being moved at the appropriate time uh, to the appropriate places. So in terms of preparation, I think that the Independent National Electoral Commission is on top of the, uh, their game. But what we want to see is a situation where they will make sure that nothing goes wrong with this particular election and they will make sure that all the personnel that have been trained uh, for the purposes of the conduct of this election are the personnel that will be found out there in the field tomorrow. So, as of today, the Bar Association has eight branches in uh, Anambra State. The chairman of the eight branches are properly mobilized and the MB election working group is also on ground and they are moving around the uh, various local governments to have a feel of what is going to happen uh, tomorrow but right. tomorrow we are going to deploy fully yes looking at the legality since you're a representative of the nigerian bar association yes. what can you tell us has there been any infringement or infraction uh, to the nigerian law especially to the nigerian electoral act in this exercise so far what do you see what are your fears well i i think that uh, the various political parties and the very, various candidates understand the provisions of the law they know when they are supposed to stop campaigning they know when they are supposed to uh, remove their campaign materials uh, from the pulling units uh, because they know some of these things they don't want to infringe on the law and then the uh, chances of they are being declared the winners of this election so as of today i think that the campaigns have been very peaceful uh, the conduct of the uh, political parties has been um, uh, very, very okay. And um, if you also look at the conduct of their primaries, you can see that the quantum and volume of litigations that was expected has not been there. And I think that one thing that is fundamental in this election is that the candidates have all gone out to go and appeal to the electorates for votes. Okay. Uh, yes. Before I allow you to go, yes. uh, election is tomorrow morning, yes. 8 a.m. Uh, from what INEC has been doing uh, in the past uh, to review the law, to amend the law, which areas do you think is critical for this election that you think perhaps INEC is not doing or what they have done? Just briefly. Well, well, I think that what INEC has done is to remain within the confines of the existing law, the law as it is today. Uh, you know that uh, the Electoral Act uh, is still going through a process of amendment, and until those amendments are completed, the issue of uh, electronic transmission of results and the other, other issues will still be in, in abeyance. But as of today, I think they are operating within the extant laws as they are today. You think the election will be free and fair tomorrow? Uh, it is a hope and a prayer that the elections will be free and fair so that the Anambra people will be proud of what they have achieved. Thank you so much, Mr. Festus Okoye, the chairman of the Nigerian Bar Association Election Monitoring Group. And that's it for now. It's back to you, Anne. All right, thank you very much. Our correspondent, Shion Okibaloe, there in Oka, the Anambra State Capital, and he was been talking to us about preparations on elections for tomorrow. In less than 17 hours, we'll be knowing how all that will go down. But in just a moment, when he's across Nigeria, returns, we'll be talking infrastructure in Enugu State. Please stay with us. Let's move back. Let's move back. Move back, please. No, 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 I 
My particular pulling unit, the materials arrived almost two hours behind schedule, uh, which I say I consider unfortunate. In 2017, after our 18 years' experience in democracy, we still talk about late arrival of materials. Even more so when the election is only in one state out of the 37 states in Nigeria. It's a sad commentary on INEC that in 2017 we are still talking about late arrival of materials. Um, but that said, I'm happy the election is going on. People have turned out in large numbers, as you can see. Um, people are hoping to vote here peacefully. And we believe that at the end of the day, uh, we, the result, the ballot to be counted and results entered peacefully. But we are watching. We are sad that INEC decided to do manual transmission of results to the World Coalition Centers. We thought they would have done electronic, as our law permits. But be that as it may, we are ready for the election.
Reports of uh, failed uh, card reader, you know, and um, this card reader stuff is something I make must do something about. In fact, the one uh, in my community here, uh, uh, polling unit 013, the technician is suspecting that they brought a card reader not meant for that polling unit. So I make should avoid this type of uh, lapse. Uh, they have enough time to configure these uh, card readers. Uh, so that uh, on the day of an election like this, everything will be smooth. Uh, I've got reports uh, across the state that in some places the card readers are not functioning and uh, they refuse to do manual accreditation, which means if they don't, um, if they're not able to rectify the, the problem with the card readers, those people will be disenfranchised. I thought they, they have what they call incident forms, where in the case of malfunction of a card reader, you write the names of those who have valid uh, voter's card and uh, give them incident forms to fill and they cast their votes.
Uh, fellow dear fans, you can see today, Friday 17. Uh, all dear fans all over the world, this is for main market. Uh, they come to buy what they will use in sitting at home tomorrow, as we are prescribe it as sit at home, often Saturday. That is what tomorrow will be. You can see them entering market, buying chickens that they will use in sitting at home tomorrow to enjoy with their family. My, my brother, can't get him. I put it now, walk up, okay? But then I fell him. Hey! Hey, keep on Saturday. And what is that, man? I In preparation of what is going to happen tomorrow, you have all over the world, you can see the Biafran trooping the market to buy what they will use in sitting at home tomorrow. As we mark it, open Sarah Day. As the zoo went to the polling booth to go and vote, we the Biafran, we are sitting in our home enjoying our open Sarah as you can see. The popular Niger Bridge acts as a boundary between Delta State and its closest neighbor, Anambra State. The bridge sitting on the River Niger connects the southeast to the western part of the country. It is bordered by Delta State to the west and Anambra to the east. Since its construction in December 1965, the bridge has proven to be one of Nigeria's busiest ones, fostering trade and investment and it gets busier than usual. That's because the Delta State Police Command is planning to shut it down because of the Anambra elections to prevent any breach of security. There is also a stop and search exercise to ensure that hoodlums do not have access into the state. Uh, if he no, no road and uh, we no go drive, because if you see if a passenger they call motor they call the carry passenger they come market uh -huh. and I be say you go see where to make uh, carry person go market. But uh, if you road no go, I be say we go stay for house so because of our life. Oh. Down into Onicha, the commercial hub of Anambra State, the once busy Onicha market appears canty and almost deserted. Traders are not smiling as they lament poor sales, obviously due to the preparations for the no-movement policy during elections. For some of them, they are ready and willing to go to the polls, while others feel reluctant. Now I'll be at home, but for election, I will back out the election. I won't vote any for anybody. Although it will affect our market, but at least our college and embryarians to come out in mass and vote. With all of these in place, it appears the people are set to go to the polls to elect who would govern them for the next four years. And the security agencies say they will leave nothing to chance to ensure the success of the exercise.